Yeah, okay. So thank you so much for inviting me to talk about this. I have also given lectures in the last couple of summer school, but I'll be talking about completely different thing today and probably interesting for all of you. So uh, the basic idea is to uh, talk about some basic programming in quantum computer uh, with uh, basically doing quantum uh, programming and using some no uh, small qubit devices or simulator. In fact, what we'll be using will be Qiskit simulator and see what we can do and how we can apply rules of quantum mechanics to do some computation. And maybe if we have time, we'll discuss some algorithms. So if you have any questions, I won't be looking at the chat uh, unless it's important. So uh, if you just have questions, just unmute yourself and ask. And I'm happy to answer. Any. Okay, so the plan, basic plan is something like this. In the lecture one, uh, we'll be talking about the basics as is mentioned, and we'll try to set up Qiskit. And in then lecture two, we'll talk about some basic algorithms and we'll write some programs hopefully. So let me just start from the basic idea. Where do we start from? Let's start from the classical computers as we know them. And these are based on transistors. So we all know that there are like billions of transistors in our laptop and those help in computing. What do transistors do? Transistors try to do some sort of a classical logic gate. So for example, uh, if you do, uh, uh, for example, if you have uh, some input data, you want to modify that data and uh, get some output, you apply some sort of a gate. For example, uh, basic truth table will look something like this. Suppose I have two, so everything is binary in classical computation. We have zeros or one. So suppose we have something like this. And then we apply this to say, AND gate. So the output of the AND gate will only be high when both the inputs are high. So zero, zero is mapped to zero, zero, one is mapped to zero, one, zero is mapped to zero, and one, one is mapped to zero. So this is AND gate. And now this AND gate can be represented by transistors. And these are the transistors which is inside your laptop. And these are the transistors uh, by which we do these classical logic gate. So this is an example of classical logic gate. And this table here is known as truth table. And this algebra of what goes to what is known as Boolean algebra. Okay, so this is AND gate. There are many different gates like this. And this is all the basic idea of classical computation. Okay, so that's well and good. Uh, wh what is the changes when we go to say quantum? now? For going to quantum, we now can have something, say, for example, before going to quantum, we need to introduce uh, this uh, notation of due to Dirac. And this is known as a bracket notation. So I just, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, uh, but. Uh, if you're not, it's uh, it's not very difficult. I just go through the basics. So in bracket notation, there's something called a row vector. So suppose let's just and then something called a cat. This is what we call bra, and this is called ket. And when they combine together, it's, it's we get something like a bracket. Bracket. That's what the name comes from. This. Okay. So let's let's. So whenever we have something like this and something like this, we can see that we can go from one to another by just doing a transpose. So for example, if you do a transpose. You go from one to another. Basically, you do complex transpose and things like that. So, for example, we can represent some state. So, in classical electronics, we had zero one. So, in quantum computation language or computation truth table, we can have something like zero, something like one, or we can also have this or this. But see, these are related. We'll just focus on this. So, say our zero and one, which was here, becomes zero and one. 
like this in quantum version. So it's like a state in a Hilbert space represented by uh, this uh, Dirac's bracket notation. One of the thing which was important and which we should emphasize in this two table here is that if I just tell you about the output and ask you what the inputs were, you cannot tell me completely, like you cannot tell me confidently what the input was. So for example, if I tell you that the output is zero, the input could have been zero, 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 one, one, zero. So these sort of things are known as non-reversible. Because you lose information. You had two bits or two classical bits as input, but you only have one output. So most of the times what happens is, if I just give you output, you cannot tell me completely or with 100% certainty what the inputs were. So this is non-reversible, but in quantum, everything is a unitary transformations and quantum computation is based on the paradigm that it has to be reversible. So if I give you some output, you can always tell me what the input was. So this already leads to a shift from classical computing. And that means in, when we write truth table or tables corresponding to a quantum computation, the number of inputs will be equal to number of outputs. There will be no place uh, uh, like we just cannot uh, do a bracket on each of them and get a corresponding quantum because that will quantum table because that will not work. Okay, so is everything clear at this point? Because now I'll try to uh, go to quantum logic gates. So, for example, I told you that AND gate is like a classical logic gate. We'll now write some transformations for quantum logic gate. So, if there is any doubt, this is a nice one to us. Okay, if if this should all be clear, so it's straightforward. Okay, now as I told before, this what we call as a bra or a state of uh, uh, some system in Hilbert space is represented by a row. So zero, for example. So when we talk about classical bits, it's either up or down. So up maybe zero or down maybe sorry, I'll just switch this off. So it's either up or it's down. So for example, in this case, zero ket or zero state can be described by something like this. Note that the sum of the elements, for example, in this case. For example, alpha one square plus ta -ta 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 plus alpha n square should sum to one, right? So in this case, it's okay. This is summing to one square plus z square is one, and this is like this. And if I want to denote one, I denote it like this. So whenever I write a ket, zero ket, I mean something like this. Whenever I write, one, I mean something like this. Now, this is just with one qubit. And one qubit has two to the power one, that is two states. And these are given by these zero and one. What about we have two qubits? Two qubits will have four states. That is zero, 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 one. 1, 0, and 1, 1. And each of them has a row representation. For example, 0, 0 is this. We can multiply this again with itself. It's something like 1, 0, 0, 0. And for example, 1, 1 will be something like 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So these are two qubit. These are for two qubits because there are two entries inside this. And this were one qubit. So this is what we denote uh, uh, in quantum logic gates, these are what will become the inputs. Okay, that's well and good. So for example, when I write zero, zero, I should mention that it's something like, right, that's why this is, uh, this has two elements, this has now four elements. So it's like a chronicle product. So this is the shorthand I'll be using. Okay, so this is the basic idea which we need, for example, 
Uh, and now what we can do is we can uh, talk about sim one of the simplest, one of the most important. Quantum gates, which is obviously unitary as all quantum gates are. What I mean by unitary is that u dagger u is identity or u dagger is u inverse. So what is the simplest quantum gate? One of the fundamental things about quantum mechanics, if you have had a course or even if you don't have a course, I can like quickly explain. One of the fundamental things about quantum mechanics is the idea of superposition. What is superposition? When we talk about classical computation, we always talk about either it's heads or tails, either the switch is on or switch is off. Either the voltage is to the ground or it's some plus V volts as in a transistor. But when we talk about quantum mechanics, it can be in a superposition state, for example. What do you mean by superposition? Suppose there are two states, zero and one, which we represented in the previous uh, page. Now, superposition is something like the state of the system will be something like this. This is a new state. When the state is like this, we call that the state is in a superposition, uniform superposition of zero and one. This can never happen in classical computation. There is no gate in classical computing to which if I throw zero and one, for example, like this, it can give me zero plus one by root two. It doesn't work. It's not possible. It's, it's a truly a quantum mechanical thing. So what gate does this? The gate which does this is Hadamard gate. And it is represented by H. So for example, if I apply Hadamard gate to say this zero, it gives me zero plus one by root two. If I apply Hadamard gate to say one, it gives me zero minus one by root two. And we can check that the a squared plus b squared is one. This is one by root two minus one by root two. So square is one, square one. And this is the basic definition of a Hadamard gate. So you give it a input, some state, and it will transform it to this uh, superposition state. Okay, so is, is everything clear till this point? Okay, I assume uh, everything is, uh, uh, every, everyone is on the same page and we are following all the uh, details. So, okay, now, one of the things now which I want to talk about is uh, what is the matrix representation of Hadamard H? I said that all these operations should be unitary. So H must be a unitary operator. If it is a unitary operator, in this case, two by two uh, operator, what is the matrix representation? So the matrix representation of Hadamard gate is given by this. It's one, oh, sorry. One, 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 one. Yeah, I think this is the matrix representation. As we can see, we can check that this is unitary. So when, when we go to writing programs in Qiskit, this is one of the first example we'll do. We'll apply a Hadamard gate to some qubit, to some state and see whether it really gives us this. So for example, if I just, uh, uh, for example, this means that if I take the zero state, which is represented by this, so this is like a, uh, uh, a row with two elements and we act add this matrix, uh, multiply this matrix to this, what we'll get is, uh, will be given by this matrix. So this is also, this is also like a, uh, sorry, this row uh, vector, which is zero plus one divided by root two. So it's basically so zero plus one by root two is just given by one by root two, one by root two. Right, so it's very easy to check that this is indeed true. Okay, so this is the Hadamard gate. 
Hadamard's gate is not the uh, not the only gate. There are many different quantum gates, and uh, what we'll be talking about is one of the one uh, is a gate which is uh, very important. It's called not uh, not gate. So this this not gate is is another quantum gate and it is unitary as it should be but now instead of considering uh, just the not gate i will consider something called a control not gate make it a little more interesting so whenever i talk about control what this means is this extra qubit which is controlling how the other qubits behave so for example when i talk about control not get it's a two qubit of uh, this is a this is will uh, this is uh, this will act on two qubits for example so for example control not get the operation is something like this zero zero goes to zero 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 one goes to zero one one zero goes to one one and one one goes to one zero. Now we can clearly see or guess what this control not gate is doing. Control not gate is going to flip the second qubit or the qubit on the right if the first one is high. So it's zero, so it's not going to do anything. It's zero, not going to do anything. This is high, so this is the control line. So this line is the control line. If the control line is high, as in this case, or for example, this case, it's going to flip the second output. So one zero becomes one one, and one one becomes one zero. This gate is control not gate, and it's known as C not gate. It's one of the most famous gates used in quantum computation. And we'll see, we'll probably, if we have time, we'll see why that is the case. But this is a control not gate. Now, when I was talking about Hadamard gate, Hadamard gate was acting on a single qubit. There was just one number in this ket. There's one in. Right now, we see that there's already two. So control not is acting on two qubits. Now, if I ask you what is the matrix representation of C naught? It's clear that it should be a four by four matrix, right? Because now we have two qubits and it has to be a four by four matrix. Control not gate is sometimes also known as control X gate or CX gate. They are the same thing. So what is the matrix representation of control not gate? It says one, one, uh, zero, zero, and one, one on the side and everything else is zero. And it's clear that if this is one, one, when this is one, it's going to flip this. That's why it's off diagonal elements. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, matrix representation of control not gate. So this is another quantum gate, which we have seen. So the Hadamard gate was acting on one qubit, and it was creating a superposition state, which is fundamentally quantum mechanics. And this C naught gate is uh, two, is acting on two qubits, and it is given by this matrix representation. Okay, but the interesting thing about this is we can also consider what is called a CC naught gate, or CCX gate, or controlled controlled naught gate. As you must have already guessed, this is acting on three operate, three qubits. So zero, zero, zero is going to go to zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. So these all will be remain unchanged. In fact, not only this, let's just go beyond this.
unchanged. And you can easily guess why this is unchanged. Because control, control not is if the left most and the one right next to it is high, only then it's going to change. So only in these two cases, this is very clear from here, that we have one and one here, one and one here. So this is the only two cases which will change. Everything else will remain the same. So how is this going to change? This is just going to become one, 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 and this is going to become one, one, zero. And this state is known as control, control not. I leave up to you to find a matrix representation of the state. It's clearly going to be an eight by eight matrix, and and you can basically guess from this form what it should look like. Right? It's clear that the first six guidance elements, one, two, three, four, five, six will be one, and then the last two by two sub matrix will have flipped uh, off diagonal entries equal to one. Okay, so that's CC not gate. Now, the thing which we have to, uh, which we should keep in mind that this control gate can be with any gate. So control Hadamard can also be there. So control Hadamard will again become a uh, two qubit thing. This control can be applied to any quantum gate in general, because control just means that the first, when something is high, then only I apply that uh, gate to the second uh, entry of, or the second qubit, for example. Okay, so is, is everything clear till this point? Okay. That's good. Now we come to uh, this idea of uh, uh, representation of representation of states on block sphere. We don't need to go into detail of what block sphere is. Just keep in mind that it's a three dimensional, sorry. It's a three dimensional sphere. For example, this is, let's label the axes. These are the three axes. And what happens is this point here. So it's like, think about a sphere and think about what classical computation is. Classical computation, if you take a sphere, is just the poles. North pole is zero, south pole is one. There's nothing in between. But in quantum computation, when I think about a sphere, in addition to those poles, there's everything on the surface also of that sphere. And that is the power of quantum computation. You don't only have two states, but you have so many intermediate states which you can create. So for example, in this case, this is zero, for example. And obviously if I go on the other side of this, this is one uh, on this point. If I ask you, what is this, what is this? And for example, what is a general vector? What is, what is say, for example, if I represent this by say, psi, this point here on the sphere, what is psi? The psi is in fact given by, so let's write psi. Psi is given by cos theta by two, zero plus e to the power i phi, for, uh, sorry, sine theta. sine theta by two, one. So this is the general state. Now it's very easy to uh, take the limiting cases. What happens if I take uh, theta equal to zero, theta equal to zero, this term drops off, this term becomes one and we get to this point. What happens if you just take this to be pi by, uh, say, th take theta to be pi, then this becomes sine th pi by two, which is one, and we can take phi to be zero, then we come to this point. So this is like a general state. So psi is known as a general state on a block sphere. This is a, this is one qubit representation. You can do it for so there's just one qubit inside. So that's why this is zero. This is one. Now what are these things? These things can be obtained from these states by doing some sort of a rotation, and those are known as rotation gates. These are also quantum gates. And these are known as Rx, Ry, Rz, depending on about which axis we are rotating. Right? 
So for example, this state here, let's write this as alpha. Alpha, for example, is given by, you can convince yourself, this is left as, as an exercise. Alpha is given by z, zero by root two plus i by root two, one. And note that even in this case, the squares one by two square plus i by two uh, square mod is equal to one. A, uh, a squared plus b squared, those, th that normalization thing is still true. And so this is that state. If I go to the other side, I just invert the sign, like the usual thing. So this is a general state. Zero and one are the state which has sit on the, known as the podal states, sit on the, uh, the north pole and the south pole on the block of the block sphere. This alpha is like this, and then you have, uh, sorry, then you have some state which is here, which I'll leave up to you to construct what that is. And similarly, we have all the possible states on any point of the sphere. And when we do programming using Qiskit, there's a very nice representation, which we'll show. Uh, and it, it can just tell you where the where the state is on the sphere. We'll, we'll hopefully get to that today or maybe tomorrow. So this is the idea of block sphere. This is important because uh, this gives you an idea where the state is basically what superposition it is and where it is lying and things like that. Okay. Now, one of the other additional things which uh, we want to discuss is that I told you when we were talking about C not get that this is also known as control X gate or C X gate, but I didn't tell you what X is. And that is what I'm going to do now. So for this example, what is this X? This X is the well known poly known as poly matrices or the poly gates in quantum mechanics uh, in quantum computation so x y z are the poly gates so x for example is represented by 0 1 1 0 y is uh, 0 minus i i 0 and z is represented by 1 minus 1 0 0 So that is uh, that is the poly gates, and now we have enlarged our uh, quantum set of gates, which I have discussed in this lecture already. By so now we have H, we have C X or C naught. Let's say C naught, C C naught, X Y Z. So these are all the gates which we have seen already. Right. So yeah, now if I say draw a circuit diagram, for example, well, now we'll talk about circuit diagrams. And once I write these things, you know what these means. And that takes us to the idea. Uh, let me just think. Uh, yes, I think it's a good time for us to draw circuit diagrams now. So I told you all the theoretical background, but how do we represent this? For example, when I tell you that uh, the the AND gate for zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one one, this was the AND gate. So the AND gate is represented like this. If you if you have studied digital electronics, or you have seen somewhere only, or maybe you'll study it in the future, it's represented like this. So this is A, this is B, so this is A, this is B, and this is output, output, and output is given by this. So this is the AND gate, diagrammatic representation of AND gate. So for example, if I draw a circuit like this, for example, you know what this circuit is doing. We can find out what this circuit is doing. So this is A, B, and C, D, four inputs. A and B go to one AND gate, and then the output is fed to another AND gate with C, and that output is fed to another AND gate with D. So this is like a circuit. This is known as a digital uh, electronic circuit. Uh, and this is uh, how you connect billions and billions of transistors uh, by combining thousands and thousands of gates like this and other gates and things like that. So this is 
the uh, uh, classical version. What do we do in quantum? It's pretty much similar. Now what we have is we have two uh, uh, we have two say input states zero and zero. And then we want to apply say H to the first one. And we won't want to apply anything to the second one. And we say measure something here. We have so this is out state. Now, a general question, a general thing I can ask you is what is psi out? What is psi out for this state? What is psi out can easily be computed by looking at the operation which is happening. So zero cube, this is in zero state, ket zero, this is ket zero. Ket zero is going all the way through. So it's just going to this zero here. But what is H doing? If I, you remember from the previous pages, if you just go all the way back, this is what H is doing. So taking, if I apply zero and pass it through H gate, it gives me this. Okay, that's good. So what is this now? So this is zero plus one over root two. But I have to calculate this psi out. So the psi out is simply given by zero plus one by root two tensored with zero. And as I already told you, shorthand notation is something like this. So this gives me zero, zero plus one, zero by root two. So this state outside, let's just reduce the clutter. This state up here is given by this. We started with zero, zero, two qubits, and then we added Hadamard gate to the first qubit. We did nothing to the second qubit. And the output we get is something like this. So this is a basic quantum circuit. Now, instead of this H, for example, let's see. Okay, so for example, let me just write it here. So as I said, H is one by square root of two, one, one, one minus one. What is X? X gate is something like one sorry zero one one zero just the poly matrix what is y y is something like y just the poly matrix so i won't write it down and then yes and then we have some other gates let's write it as p so p is a phase gate and the representation is something like this one zero zero e to the power i phi and then we have t gate which is one zero zero e to the power i pi by four, I think. Yes. So these are different gates. So for example, instead of this H, I could have applied gate this P gate with some phi, well defined phi, and then I could have asked you what is the output state, and you would do the same thing. So yeah. So I hope this is all clear. If there is any question questions at this point, uh, maybe I can take them. Otherwise, I'll keep keep on going okay so if there are no more questions let's just uh, let's just talk about uh, another gate or maybe uh, rather than talking about another gate i'll I'll give a small exercise, for example, just for you to work out in a couple of minutes, probably. What? So, yeah, let's see. So this is T gate. There's also something called S gate. And S gate is given by 1, 0, 0, I. Right? So now what we want to do is uh, see. To copy this and put it here. 
and then I want to ask you compute or calculate rather. Calculate what is H comma S comma T comma H on zero. So I'll leave this questions. If you if you if you if you get the answer, just let me know. I'll just give you 30 seconds or maybe a little more to work this out. So I, I'm acting with so we already know what H is. H is the Hadamard gate. T and S are mentioned here. So those are the gates here. And then uh, I want to know what the output is. So is equal to what? I just give you some time to get through this. And uh, it's very simple. It's very, so we already know what H10 is, right? So H10 is, for example, is 0 plus 1 by root 2. Now you act what is T on this. 0 plus 1 by root 2. And then you act uh, uh, S on that. This so gives something like this. And then you act. And this is answer. You can use the fact that E is uh, E to the power I pi by whatever, pi by 2 or whatever. Yeah, pi by 2. That can simplify the computation. The answer which you should get, as per my notes, is that you should get 1 by 2. I hope you are all trying. I cannot. Uh, yeah, if you if you are not sure about something, you should ask. But I, I hope that you are at least attempting to write what this should be. So I have 3 by 4. And this is with 0. And with 1, it's something like 4, 1, 1. So this is the answer. So this is this. It's clear that why is there a factor of 1 by 2? There should be definitely a factor of 1 by 2 because the s gate is acting twice. You will get 1 by square root of 2 from one edge, another 1 by square root of 2 from another gate. So that's 1 already. I can already see why this is 3 pi by 4. This is 3 pi by 4 because I'm acting with s and t. So t adds the phase of e to the power i pi by 4, and s adds the phase of i, which is just e to the power pi by 2. And pi by 2 plus pi by 4 is 3 pi by 4. Right? So this is this is a basic map. Okay, so with this uh, out of the way, I want to do another small exercise, and then uh, we'll keep on going with other things. And the small exercise now is this. Suppose I have three inputs. All of them are initialized in zero get zero state i apply the oh before that i think i should say something yeah let's just okay so if you remember we said something about control not gate also known as c not gate but i didn't tell you the representation of this gate so the representation of H, S, T gates are very simple. We just put a make a box, right? Uh, whatever letter it starts with uh, inside that. Representation of C not gate is a little different, not very, very different, but a little different. It's something like this, like a solid sphere, and then there is a line, and then there is something like this. So this is a C not gate. This blob here, the solid blob, this is the control line. And this plus here is the line which is going to be not gate, like is the place where we apply not. So maybe in future or when you read papers related to quantum computation, you will see a circuit diagram like this a lot of time. 
with a solid sphere on the like solid blob on the top and then plus on the bottom so what this means is this basically means that if this is zero and this is zero the output will be zero and zero if the input is say one and zero the output will be one and one so whenever this line is activated whenever this line is high this output is going to be flipped it's a similar thing which we just saw in in here it is so if you if i want to ask you what is the circuit representation of this thing it's given by this what about control control not it's exactly the same three lines now there are two blobs and there are one plus and they are connected like this and then this is the output this is, so this is cc not yet right now once we have this now i can get back to the thing i wanted to do which is to write a circuit and ask you what is the output that circuit so initialize three qubits in zero state apply h to the first and then use it like a control line to get a plus with this one and then use this the second one as a control line to take it as a plus with this one and this is this so what is the output for this case okay i'll let you let you quickly do this and i'll really ask someone who has figured this out to just uh, unmute themselves and just tell me what the answer they think is it's very straightforward okay if you have any doubts in this point or what we have discussed please feel free to ask me so apply h to the first one see what is at this point and then based on whether that is zero or one, flip this one, and whether based on this one, see whether it's zero or one, flip this one. We'll get a very famous state. The state is a is uh, is called GHZ state in quantum mechanics or quantum information, and it's a three qubit state, and it's very famous. Like it's very well known state. It's named after the uh, authors who discovered it back in the eighties, I think. So, okay. So, anyone figured this out yet? What do you think the state should be? We have to make sure that it's normalized properly, also, which should be straightforward because there will just be one factor of square root of two outside. So, the answer should be of this form one by square root of two times something a b c plus one by square root of two times d e f or something i have an answer here let's see yeah that's 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 correct so julian wrote something in the chat and that is exactly correct and this is known as g h z state and uh, this is what the uh, answer should be. It should be so. Let me just mention this to those. So, for example, let's let's just go to the next page. So, I start with we start with uh, zero zero zero. What happens now? H to the first one. H to the first one takes us to. this c naught with the control as the first qubit and the target as the second one so let's simplify this this is equal to 0 0 0 by root 2 plus 1 0 0 by root 2 now control not gate so if the first is high then we flip the second one otherwise we leave it so we are going to leave it for this and since this is high, we are going to flip the second one to get something like this. But this is not it. We still have one more to go. 
and this is between the second and the third. So now if the second qubit is high, we flip the third one. So no flipping here, definite flipping here, and we get this. And this is the GHZ state. So GHZ state is a famous state because it's one of the ways to entangle three qubits. So this is known as an entangled state. In quantum mechanics, I told you, there's something called a superposition. But there's another very important feature, probably the most important feature in quantum mechanics, that's entanglement. It's the fact that things are related to each other in a very, very, uh, very mathematical way. And this is the entangled state of three qubits, because three qubits are entangled like this. So entanglement of three qubits. Okay, very good. Is, I, uh, is everything clear up until this point? If there is any doubt or something is something is um, uh, not clear or maybe you're not able to understand, this is a good time to ask. The whole point of this lecture is not to, for me to cover something and then this go. The, the point is that you learn something and then once you start reading books or papers or whatever you want to read, you understand. So if you see a circuit diagram like this in the evening today, you understand what it is doing. That is the whole point. So I want to be, I want to be clear that we are following everything I'm saying. Okay. So that's that's very good. Now, uh, yeah. Let me just mention it in passing since we are on this. There, are, there's also another way of entangling three qubits, which is known as W state, and that state is given by. Like this. So this is also one of the possibilities of entangling three qubits. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. There is another gate which we call swap gate, and this is mathematically represented like this. Suppose we have two states A and B. So this is B and A. So basically A comma comma B will go to B comma A. So it swaps the qubits. It's a simple gate which is called swap gate. And you can also have C swap gate, which means control swap. So in this case, we have something like A and B and then some output where this is the control line. As I mentioned, right? So swap gate and Control swaps of other two bits. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we can. We can. We can do that, right? One of the things uh, which is interesting in uh, at least when we understand digital electronics is is the idea of full adder circuit. For example, when I ask when I ask the computer to add two numbers, how does it do that? So it does that like this. So suppose there's A, B, and C, I. I'll explain what these are. And suppose there's something called uh, uh, C, O, S, A, and B. So for example, A and B can be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Note that we have two classical bits, A and B here. 
they can either be zero or one and we can have ci which is called carry in so it's like simple way we add so carry in is ci and ci can be zero or one now if i do that a and b remains the same but what is the sum in this case the sum is zero and carry out is zero this is carry out in this case also the sum in this carry out is zero but the sum is one sum is one because the carry in was one even though a and b we are adding a and b so a and b adding gives me nothing but there was carry in so i have to take that and that gives me a sum of one and similarly we can complete the table and i'll just write it down from my notes you can convince yourself that that is true because going through each case will take some time for us. And these A and B are the same as. So this is the circuit. Uh, this is the truth table of a full adder in digital electronics. Three inputs, four outputs. And you can make this circuit using AND gate, NOR gates and other things. And this is a very standard exercise I did when at least I was doing this course uh, back in India, that undergrad course in digital electronics, that you construct these circuits out of uh, uh, those classical logic gates. So I'll leave that in an exercise. But one thing to note immediately is we cannot go to the quantum with this version because there are three inputs and four outputs. So what we do is we add something called a garbage input. This is a name which is, I think, comes due to Feynman's article on quantum computation at some point, and we just add it to be zero. But now we have uh, we have uh, four inputs and four outputs, and we can uh, we can uh, uh, do this on quantum computer. So let's let's before going to that, let's just tell you give you a circuit for this. Circuit for full adder. The circuit for full adder, obviously, as we see, that we'll have four A, B, carry in, and Z. So, what is the first step? The first step is a CC not gate between, sorry, CC not gate between first, second, and the fourth one. Yeah, I don't know. I should probably use this a little difficult to follow. So let's just use some color set. So blob. Yeah, okay. So this is C, this is C, and this is so this is one gate. And the second is this and this. Third is uh, just to show you how things already start to become complicated once we are. And this CC naught again. And then between this and this, we have a C naught. And then we have a C naught here between these two. And now what I'll do is I'll take a white and connect these. So if there is an input of A, B, carry in and Z like this. So let's see what gate is this. This gate is C, C naught. A and B are controlled and target is Z. This is a C naught gate. This is a C, C naught gate. This is a C naught gate. And this is a C naught gate. So quantum full address circuit can be constructed out of three C naught and two CC not gate, right? It needs four qubits as input. And once we pass it to this, we can get, for example, uh, so let's see, A, B, sum, and this is carry out. And the gates which we see in the circuit is already something which we are seeing. One thing to note is that the CC not gate could also refer to as 
the Toffoli gate after an Italian mathematician or yeah, I think mathematician, Italian mathematician Toffoli. So it's known as Toffoli gate. Uh, when they're uh, CC gate, it's a three qubit gate. Uh, but the good thing about CC not gate is, even though it's a three qubit gate, it can be decomposed into two qubit gates. Right now, with the architectures we have and the simulator, on the simulator it's not a problem. But if you really want to run on, say, IBM quantum computing machine, the access to three qubits is not very uh, easy. So people always want to write every circuit diagram or everything in terms of two qubit gates. But the problem is one three qubit gate will be probably equivalent to four or five two qubit gates. So if you want to write down a higher qubit gate into a lower qubit gate, you need more gates. And that is all the all the thing that is uh, creating the problem. And we are trying to understand, the scientists are trying to understand. So does Z go to S on the, uh, no, uh, Z goes to carry out. Z goes to carry out. Carry in goes to sum. And that is clear because, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's Z goes to carry out. Okay, so we can always decompose three qubit gates to uh, two qubit gates and things like that. But uh, just to keep in mind that there's a very interesting. Uh, Three qubit gate known as Toffoli gate. Okay, so now uh, let's see. Maybe maybe it's a good time to just set up things on Qiskit and uh, so that we use it tomorrow to do several things. And then, so we have seen a lot of theory, for example. This is all theory. How do we implement it? So let's do that. I'll be using Google Collab for that. So if you have a Google account, you can just uh, create, uh, you can go to, I'll be doing that so you can see what I'm trying to do as well. But uh, you can go to Google Collab and then we'll be doing it online and I'll be telling you what code you should write and then you should run it. It should all be fine. You don't need to install anything, I think. That's a good thing. Uh, everything will be installed. We'll write a command for that. And then uh, we'll see how these things we have spoken about can actually be implemented in our simulator. Note that we, it's not a real quantum device. It's like a simulator. Simulator is something like when there's like when pilots want to train or do some training, they go to a simulator. They don't really fly the plane in the sky. They go to a simulator. So it's like a simulator. Kiskit is like a simulator. We write our small quantum programs in that simulator. But if the need be, we can port that program to real uh, quantum hardware or quantum devices. But the basic idea is to learn. Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. I guess you should be able to see it. So this is what, uh, so let's give it a name. Uh, RPI is cool. On uh, online. Okay, so this is this is I think all of what all of you should have at the moment, and the magic line which will install Kiskit for you here is uh, let's, let me remember it. Ah, yeah, exclamation. Pip install Kiskit by Python. Yeah, so this is all of you can share this. I uh, see the screen, I hope. And if I just run this, it'll do some, it'll install all the things necessary. Let's see if it does that. We have to wait a little bit. So Qiskit comes in, Qiskit has many umbrellas under which it is comes. So for example, there's Qiskit AER, Qiskit Terra, Qiskit Ignis. You can read about that if you're interested on Qiskit. Qiskit is from IBM. So they have developed it, but a lot of people use this. So you install everything here. A lot of things have been installed. Going on, going on. So this, this you can also install locally on your laptop. 
but I think this is the this is this is the best way to do it on live session. Yeah, I think it's done. Yep, it gives you some error, but that really doesn't. Uh, so once you have this done, I'll just comment this line. And then I am set to write my first uh, program. And let's see what we should write. Uh, what should we write? Yeah, let's 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 write, let's write a simple something like a hello world for quantum computing. So before that, we make we need to make sure that we have installed everything correctly. And from that, we do from Kiskit import uh, all everything and then we write quantum circuit and we do quantum circuit and then we write two in the brackets that just means that this is a two qubit state so if there was just one qubit initialization we'll just write one here and then what we'll do is qc dot h on zero so what is QC dot H on zero? It's applying the Hadamard gate to the first qubit. And then we want to see what the circuit looks like so that we have uh, some idea. If I run this, I get something like this. And that's exactly what I sh showed you in the lecture. There are two qubits, Q0 and Q1. And then uh, it's applying a Hadamard gate to the first qubit. So this is the circuit. You see, is this quantum circuit? Okay, so that's all well and good. Seems like things are working. Uh, let's let's write a more sophisticated or a little more. Uh, sorry, what is star? Oh, uh, what is star? Uh, it just imports all the necessary things. So basically, if I write star, I don't have to like. It's like it's like in NumPy from. So sometimes you can call numpy as import numpy as np. Then you write np dot math np dot square root. But if you write from numpy import star, then you can just write square root. It creates a problem sometimes, but for our purposes, it's fine. So it will import. It will automatically know that what uh, it's that that's what star means in this case. Is it clear? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. So for example, from if I was saying from numpy, uh, yeah, import numpy as np. So then I say, uh, uh, what is a numpy square root of a? So for example, if I now print a, okay, so it just gives me 1.414. But if I just say that from numpy, Import oh, then probably I don't need the square root here. Exactly. So that's what the star does. I think it should be clear from this. Okay. So this is all fine. I'll delete this because we want to write some other code. And what do we write from Kiskit? We import this. Uh, from Kiskit, we can import some other things because if you don't want to use star, you can use something like this. We'll import. Uh, this uh, quantum circuit as symbol and then AER is something uh, which comes with Qiskit. Uh, and from we want to visualize uh, this so from Qiskit dot visualization yeah, this visualization import uh, plot block we want to plot block vectors block multi -vector. So this is one of the good things about Google Collab. It also gives you a suggestion. You don't have to type everything all the time. Plot histogram, that's exactly what I want. And what is a simulator, which I want? I want uh, AER backend. AER dot get back end. And this is AER simulator. So this is like a simulator, which I just mentioned, like dummy way of running codes. So let's just define a function x measurement x underscore measurement and what do we take we take the quantum circuit it takes the qubit and it takes the 
classical bit. So for example, even in quantum program, you always need some classical bit, right? Because you want to measure it. So this is the Qiskit is like a hybrid quantum classical algorithm in the sense that we prepare some qubits, but when we really want to measure the qubits, we measure probably using classical bits. Right? So it's like running something on your quantum computer and it throws you something and then you measure using some. It's like doing experiment. You shine light of uh, laser or do some polarization experiment, but there has to be a human which is going to measure it or see those events. So it's like a classical thing. Okay, so what is this QCX measurement? Let's just define this as acting with the Hadamard gate on qubit and then measuring the same thing on uh, qubit c bit c bit is just classical bit and return qc this is like a function we have to, uh, we couldn't have done it directly but i just want to show you how functions look like in this case so now what is qc let's define a quantum circuit with one qubit quantum bit one quantum bit and one classical bit and then apply this x measurement thing we wrote uh, on the top on this qc on zero qubit and zero classical bit and then we assemble this uh, quantum circuit and then we will count you, you'll understand these meanings once we run the code i'll explain it i'll just let me just finish writing it on first you obj dot result uh, this this that get counts uh, this print counts and plot histogram yeah plot histogram for the counts let's see if it runs properly okay oh it should be a underscore okay so what i'm doing in this circuit diagram i am acting with hadamard gate on the first qubit on the qubit which is specified so if it is x measurement qc00 so acting on hadamard with on the first zero qubit and then measuring it now i already told you that if i have some state zero and i act with hadamard gate it gives me zero plus one pi square root of two right so if it is zero plus one square root of two state, and I go into that state and try to measure it. What should I get? I should get 50% of the time I should get zero and 50% of the time I should get one. It's like the Schrodinger cat uh, basic idea. It's in the superposition of zero one, dead or alive. Once we measure it, we know what it is. So it's exactly like that. So what does the simulator get if I do something like this? So simulator does 1024 shots. So simulator goes to this uh, state which has been created by using a Hadamard gate and measures it 518 times it measures it to be zero 506 times it measures it to be one which is about 50 50 as you can see 0 0.506 0 0.494 but suppose you really want to get better then what do we do i can say that let's take 8000 shots what happens when i take 8000 shots it's 4125 and 4067. It gets a little better. If I increase this, if I should take more number of shots, then the average will convert to the exact theoretical value, which is 0 0.5. Right? Now, the more shots you take, the more money we have to pay to, say, IBM or some quantum computer because the price, the way. So, for example, when we talk about classical computing, we talk about number of core hours, for example. If you want to write a grant to run your code on say Fermilab machine or some machine, you say that I want 1 million core hours. In quantum computing, it's a little difficult because there are different ways of measuring it. Shorts is one of the ways in which price is estimated. More shorts means more uh, uh, computation time, right? Because it gets more and more accurate. So it has to do more shorts. It has to run the same circuit multiple times. So this is one example of quantum code uh, running on our um, Google collaboratory and giving us uh, a superposition state, zero plus one, sketch zero plus sketch one by square root two. Is everything clear till this point? If, uh, if, if there's something you want to ask, maybe this is a good time. 
So did anyone try writing this code online? Uh, did it work for you? Uh, can you scroll up just a bit? Um, I think I missed something at the beginning. Yeah. Um, thank you. No problem. So did anyone manage to successfully write and get generate the histogram? That's great. That's great. That's great. Good, good, very good. Very good, very good. Okay, so that seems it's working. We can do some more things today. We're almost in the last 10, 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, we'll do much more tomorrow. And yeah, you can also read up in the meantime uh, if you are really interested in these sort of things, because this is this is like very interesting, I think. At least I, I don't do research on this, but this is something which is interests me as a physicist. And obviously this is the future. This is the where the things are going to be done. It's like we are in the 1940s of classical computers for quantum computers. So it's like a very nice time to learn and really see if you can contribute and be part of this development okay so yeah let's see uh one more thing which i wanted to talk about today uh was i said something about the uh, block sphere uh and how we represent uh, the uh any given arbitrary state on the block sphere and what it can tell us so let's Try to uh, uh, yeah. Let's try to do that now. Yeah. Okay. Thinking. Okay. Yeah. I think. I think that's fine. I'll keep on. Uh, I'll keep on writing on this, Mister. Let's see what happens. So, yeah. So before that, let's let's make. Let's make another quantum circuit, this time with no classical qubits, but with just quantum qubits. Apply the Hadamard gate to the zero one. And then, uh... yeah, and let me, let me just show that, so. Quantum circuit. I want to display something to you, uh, which will make it a little nicer so that you understand. So I don't know, maybe most of you are familiar with this uh, LaTeX things, which we use to write uh, articles and things like that. Let's see if a uh, state vector is not here. So let's see. Is it to something? Is it something? Ah. Oh, elite will be also not defined. Okay. Is it? Dot visualization import uh, array to LaTeX. Yeah, this one. I hope it's now. Ah, what? Oh, skit. Okay, yeah, so, ah. Uh, I don't know what is happening. It should be representing it like a square. Huh. Yeah, so, okay. I don't know why. So it's it's giving me the LaTeX code of that matrix, but it's not representing it. Maybe I need to install some plugin or something like that. But this is the command. What it gives you, it's give you a LaTeX, LaTeX version of a column vector. And it will give you one by square root of two, one by square root of two based on, uh, based on, the input state. So, for example, we had the Hadamard on zero, so it gives you the one by square root of two times the usual uh, used stuff. Okay. Uh, yes. Now we want to go to the blocks here because I think that's that's more important thing. And you can just uh, 
can't comment these things. We don't want to deal with this. So let's create a random state. And what do we uh, what do we want for the random state vector? We want four. So we want to create a two qubit state. Two qubit has four states, as we've discussed. And we'll print this thing just to see how it looks like. And then we'll plot on block sphere. I might have to install some multi-vector random state vector. This will import. So I could just write it here, but let's just write it here. So that's if someone wants to copy, they can still like. multi vector state vector is not defined oh state vector state vector. okay so let's see yeah now we are doing it. so you can forget about the first line because the first thing is just coming from here let me just run it again. Okay, so this is now creating a two qubit state. And as I told you on the block sphere, there's zero on the top, one at the bottom, zero at the top. So this is for the qubit number zero, this is for qubit number one. Now I create a random state, which is given by this. So the random state is something like minus 0 0.15 minus 0 0.28 times complex number imaginary i times zero zero plus this thing multiplied with 0, 1, plus this thing multiplied by 1, 0, and this thing multiplied by 1, 1. Now, I want to represent uh, this state uh, on a block sphere. So how does it look like? This arrow is the position of the 0, uh, is the first qubit, and this is the position of the second qubit. Right? So this is how it looks like. Now, this is a random state vector. And if you add these, uh, do this, this will all sum to 1. So if you take the absolute value square it and add it you get one now since this is random just note how the position flips when i run the code again so this is both of them pointing to the left hand side and i run the code again what happens it just moves right so every time i run the code it gives me some another state vector so this is like uh, if i want to generate a random state vector this is how i do it and the visualization on the block sphere is something like this okay that's very good but uh let me just also show you what I said before. So, I guess this should work. Yes. So now, as I told you that if I apply the, so suppose initially I have something, let's say I have something in zero. The arrow is pointing up, right? Because it's zero. Now, if I do qc dot x of zero, see how the uh, arrow will change. Now it flips. And that's just because x means that if it is zero, it will make it one. So it, it was zero before, now it makes it one. Now I apply h to zero. What does it do? It takes it along the y, uh, along the positive x axis. Right? Now, if I was, if I had something like qc dot x zero, and then one. Can anyone guess which uh, side the direction would be? Which side will the arrow pointing be? If I run this code now, it will just be pointing in the exact opposite direction, right? Because if it was zero plus one square root of two, it's along the positive x-axis. If I'm acting now on one, so this is giving. So start with zero. You see, dot x gives me one. Get one. And if I act the Haramard gate on ket1, it gives me 0 ket minus 1 square root of 2. So it's opposite. And that's exactly what we get. So this is the visualization, for example. In this case, the circuit diagram is just given by this. So this is the visualization of the block sphere. So for example, I can also do something like uh, uh, Rx of... Uh, Pi by two, zero. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does. So this is a rotation along x axis by an angle of pi by two. It gives starts from here, lands up here. 
And if I give it, say, pi by 4, it goes somewhere here in between. If I give it pi by 8, it goes here. And you can see that it is the deviation from 0 is reducing depending on the angle. If I do pi by 100, what do you think it will be? It should be very close to the vertical arrow. And it's exactly vertical arrow. We cannot make out the difference. So how can you say that we cannot make out the difference? Even if I uncomment this line, the arrow will not change much in position. That's how we say that it doesn't make much of a difference. So this is the rotation along X, Y, Z. So you can also do rotation along Y by pi by four. And this goes like this. Rotation along Z by pi by four. It goes like this. Rotation along Z, there's no rotation because this is on a pole. And pole has, you cannot, you need to be somewhere in the plane to rotate. So these are very nice things and uh, these are very helpful. So uh, I think for today, uh, we can just stop here. Uh, uh, let's see. Yes, and tomorrow we'll do some more programming and some other things. I don't want to start something and then leave it in between. So it's best if we just follow and take questions for whatever we did today for the entire time. And then uh, we finish today and then start restart tomorrow. Stop sharing my screen here. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that there's a transcript of captions also. So, uh, it, <laughs> any questions related to what all we did today? Uh, anything you want to ask or maybe I was not clear, we can discuss that one. So tomorrow we'll be talking about this uh, GHZ state we discussed. We'll talk about how we can create GHZ state using our quantum codes uh, uh, in Qiskit, and then we'll do we'll go into some uh, we'll discuss some simple algorithms like uh, 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 Deutsch algorithm. Probably we will get to that, and then there's some idea of phase kickback which we'll discuss. There's some other very important uh, algorithms, quantum algorithms like Schwarz algorithm, which is related to quantum cryptography and RSA protocols and things like that. But probably uh, 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 we won't have time to get into that. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do tomorrow. But I'll, I'll definitely start by doing some review of tomorrow in the first 10, 15 minutes, a quick summary of what we did today. So that's someone who missed probably today or uh, just to make sure that it's completely solid and then we proceed from there and see uh, what we can do. Yeah, okay. So I think thanks. Thanks for today. Thanks for listening. Yeah, see you uh, tomorrow. All righty, then. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gutchow.